everybody, this is Red Band coming to you live from the Comedy Store for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Fuck yeah, everybody. Hi, how are you? Good to be here, everyone. What another lovely Monday, episode 31 of Kill Tony. Brian, how's it going? Great. I am um, almost done. I, uh, I have not the old Death Squad studio. Death Squad started in my uh, office. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved to the Ice House, I pretty much abandoned a room in my house. Used it as storage. I haven't been in it in a year and a half. I remember that room. Yeah. That was the first podcast I ever did was Brody Stevens' first podcast, The Brody Stevens Experiment. Yeah. It was the first one I had ever even dabbled with. And... Uh, and that was crazy. And that was definitely at your place. Yeah. It, in it, a it, tiny room. <laughs> it turned into where my cat lived and shit and puked. And I couldn't even look inside to see if the cat was alive anymore. And so f I've been like just, you know, it's been one of those things in the back of my head where I'm just like, God damn, I need to clean that room one day. But Did you do it? Yeah. I spent the last three days cleaning that room. So what's the room now? Now it's uh, a new studio, I guess. So Whoa. I have another studio. But uh, it's, yeah. it's great. It's amazing how like a room that I hated for so long. Now I can't get out of it. I just right. love sitting in there now because it's like the cleanest right. room. So It was a fun little studio. Yeah. The art and everything being tight and in. That was fun. Uh, yeah, I had fun. I'm excited about New Year's Eve being tomorrow night, guys. Anybody else excited for 2014? Yeah. I'm excited, and I'm extra excited because today... My new Asics came in. If you know me, you know that I, I'm a big Asics fan on Atsuka Tigers till I die. And I have, you know, a couple people have mentioned that my nickname is the Golden Pony. And I have my first ever golden pair of Asics <laughs> that got delivered today. Jeez. It was so hard for me not to wear them tonight, but I'm debuting them tomorrow night. I mean, they are fucking sweet. They're wrestling shoes, and they are shiny gold. What do you wear that with? Like uh, I'm wearing it with everything. Shorts, yeah, I'm wearing it with everything that I wear. I've already thought about that. I'm like, these are not going to go good with khakis, but fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> They're going to rock with jeans tomorrow night. You should dazzle them up, put a little... You know, they cannot be. Wait till you see these things. If I put dazzles on it, it would just lame it down. These things are fucking obnoxious. Yeah. On the bottom of it, it's all stars, like gold and black stars, and it says, dream it, do it. I don't even know what it means, but I'm excited. <laughs> I'm inspired by my own pair of shoes. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it'll be fun. 2014, we have some crazy, gigantic guests coming in for Kill Tony in the next year that are very excited to do it um you know tony clifton is coming in very wow. early january 2014 which is unbelievable That's to me cool. because that was one of the big things that got me into comedy was andy kaufman and bob zamuda and tony clifton and that whole team of risk takers and it's gonna be interesting seeing tony on this show because oh. I, I can't even imagine how his you know, like when a comic does their one minute, what he's going to say. Oh, my God. I cannot be fucking wait. I just I just have dreams about it of excitement. Like sometimes I just wake up with a smile on my face what thinking the... about what it's going to be like. Who are you going to team him up with? It, you should get like a Holtzman I have no <laughs> Yeah, right. That's what I'm going to do. The night the comedy store belly room exploded. Yeah. No. We got a stormtrooper in the audience today. Hey, it's look at that. Ass. All the way from the planet uh, Death Star, everybody. Put your hands together for storm confused stormtrooper, it appears. <laughs> I like that. Who I, won I wish more people wore costumes. Iron Patriot is here, the head of security. Yeah. Put your hands together for him. He's here. Patriot, are you threatened by the stormtrooper in the corner? No, that's a cheap costume. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh and, no, he did it. And it has begun. I, oh. see that, I see that down on Hollywood Boulevard every day. I, said, I thought I'd get a break from it when I come down here, and it's even here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, that's why you're the number one Iron Patriot. In Look the, at that yeah. death glare from the, the Stormtrooper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, shit. Yeah. You guys are going to have a battle of the plastic later. Yeah. It's going to sound like fucking, I don't know what. We had a good year, Tony. I'm looking forward to 2014. Um, I'm, I, li I live a clean life, so I don't need to make any New Year's resolutions. But you, on the other hand, you're trying to stop smoking completely. I think Wednesday the 1st would be a good day for you to stop completely. 
I, I quit smoking cigarettes. I'm just on this uh, vapor pen now, and I really like it. I'm just going to stick with this for no, a while. I think you should stop that. No, too. I'm not yeah, going I to. Think, I think he's right. No, I'm not going that to. That still has nicotine. I know you're weaning yourself off, but it's time to, time to get off the, the tip. Patriot, I really appreciate your advice, but you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Okay. I think you should start smoking cigarettes again. I bet you do. I miss my. We had a lot buddy. of fun smoking cigarettes. Yeah, together. it really sucks when your smoking buddy leaves you. Well, I know, but I was. I'm a chain smoker, Brian, and it's already bad enough. And I'm not. No, I know. We could be and chain smokers We inspired together. each other. Sometimes I'd be done with a cigarette, like I'd be ready to go inside, and you'd light up another one, and I'm just like, I wouldn't say, f- all right, I'm not gonna have another one. I would just smoke another one. We're we're bad for each other. I know, man. We're bad. By the way, whose miscellaneous cell phone is up here? Somebody lose a cell Anyone phone? Anyone lose a cell Josh, phone? Josh, Patreon. Anyone won a cell phone? It looks like... Oh, really? Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm very excited about tonight's show. We have two awesome guests. Uh, you guys ready to get this thing started or what? <laughs> Fuck yeah, people. Um... I'm so excited about tonight. For our first guest, uh, he is a writer on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. More importantly, he's one of my favorite comedians in the world. Uh, super fucking awesome, hilarious guy. I remember hearing about him and then getting to see him. I heard his reputation. People were like, you don't know Bob Oshek, this and that, when I first started working the door here. And when I saw him, he blew my fucking mind to shreds. I'm so excited that he's on this show. Put your hands together for Bob Oshak is here. And the other guest, the star of Enjoy It, every Sunday on Comedy Central, ladies and gentlemen, one of my best pals in the world, Steven Brody Stevens is here. You got it. Brody and Bob, Bob and Brody, you got it. Push and believe. Push and believe. Bob, how you doing, buddy? I'm super excited to be here. Uh, this is my very first, uh, I've told you this on the phone earlier yeah. in the day when yeah. I sounded a little shaky. Yeah. Uh, it's my first podcast. But uh, uh, Bob you. Oshak, yeah, that's crazy. first podcast. Stay seated. Really? What's, up with the, what's up with the depressed fourth row back there? Why aren't you guys in it? They're looking behind them. No, it's you guys. Yeah. Get into it, you motherfuckers. How have you escaped not doing a podcast living yeah, in this town? Yeah, Seriously. Uh, I, I, I'm just old, I guess. I don't know. I don't even fully understand what we're doing here. This is on the radio of some sort, <laughs> like some sort of, but only a computer radio. <laughs> but you know, half of this, it's not shtick. It's genuine. I'm genuinely confused and right. scared right now. No, and well, then you've got that in here, and I don't, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, but. Can I talk to you, Bob? Yes, sir. Um, I did some research on you today. Um, of course, you're the writer on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Thank you. Um, you guys got this skeleton robot named Jeff Peterson. On. That, that is true, you yes. Know, you know, he's pretty cool. He's not as awesome as me, but N- no. nobody can be. But anyway, do you write any of the funny things that he says, that, uh, that robot? The, the, anything the robot says? Yeah. Uh, a few things here and there, for the most part, he kind of comes up with that himself, just like you're coming up with this brilliance on your own. Yes, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> That was a good question, Patriot. Oh, that yeah. was good. Thank I you. Thought it was, I thought it was a pretty good... Can well, I ask a, Go ahead, Patriot. Let me talk to you, Brody. Sure. <laughs> okay, um, Brody, this is the third time you've been on Kill Tony. You must be doing something right. Yeah, I, I, I've i played my cards smart, smart cards, and I know that good things have been happening up here. I had a great time, and I knew that hopefully Tony would get me back in, and that day is tonight. Thanks. Yeah, you got the TV here. show going. That That's exciting. Um, you got a new podcast thing, Positive Push, on YouTube. I was watching that today. You got that? You did, you did a recent episode of Red Band that was really good. Brian was on, a lot of hits, positivity. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that seems to be missing from your life is that special lady. Now, now, what I want to know is, what kind of woman do you think would make Brody happy? W- would she go on the road with you? Would Would she be an extrovert like you? Would she be 10% gay? What, what would she be like? <laughs> uh, I hope she's 10% gay. That's, you know, what I'm saying. Maybe 20%. I'm into that on her end. <laughs> I would say that I am, the tweets I'm receiving, the at replies, the women are, they've become more attractive recently. Yeah. So, I'll let that build up a little bit, but, yeah. you know, I think the girl I'd like to settle with has got to be, you know, a common influence, a, a scratches, massages. 
She's oh, got a scratches. Help, yeah, help you, cook. You like I'm to need chokey? I like just need, what's that? You like to get choked? No. Huh? Choked? Yeah. She can choke my chicken. Oh. Whoa, <laughs> I'm doing, there I'm you doing, go. But I'm doing bits, guys. No, but <laughs> I want a girl who would take care of me. I need that. I'm too hard on myself, and that's what I'm looking for, a, woman, a domesticated woman. Thank you. Fuck yeah. That's how I feel. So you uh, you use Twitter as a barometer on that, huh? Well, you can see the photos, and these girls are a, more attractive than what I was getting before on right. there. It's right. It's actually tangible, <laughs> factual evidence, and yeah. that feels good. <laughs> this, this is how surreal this whole thing is. Yeah. Uh, I've been up here, what, seven minutes, yeah. six minutes? I just now noticed the full Stormtrooper guy. <laughs> that's how odd. That, usually that's something you notice right away. In this kaleidoscope yeah. of psychedelic <laughs> funk, uh, I just now noticed the guy. How you doing? <laughs> I love it. It, it really is. It's got to be different. And you probably heard so. You probably heard the word podcast so many times. You really do have the big celebrities here. Just a couple people down. Look who it is in the stand, ladies and gentlemen. It's Darius Rucker. Oh, it's Hootie wow. from Hootie and the Bullfish. Hey, Hootie, here. everybody. And guys, right next to him, you love him, podcast icon Chris Hardwick is here. <laughs> this is I saw that, too. I noticed that. That's, That's unbelievable. Funny. I'll come up with more as we can. You continue. got it. The nerdest <laughs> here. It really is a who's who of. Host of At Midnight, where I work. There you go. The Push. crowd warm up. Well, yeah, I warm crowds. Thanks, you, Tony. Wait, yeah. I like actually, I like doing audience warm up. You know, they offered me to do it tonight. I said, Red Band, this crowd's so hot, and they get it. They don't need to be warmed up. They understand the format. They're here to see the show. They un they they know how it works. And I say, let's push it to another level and have a great show tonight. What do you think, audience? Hell yeah! Well, is that all you got? Is that all you got? Let's crank it. this thing! Yeah, I'm excited too. Bob does. Uh, Bob, you do warm up at Ferguson, right? I do. I do. I do. I do warm up at you Ferguson. Me, you're taking that gig from me. Well, right. I, uh, I don't have the energy. I just give out T-shirts, <laughs> 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 and there might be a few in the mix if we play our cards right, people. I love it. Kill Tony T-shirts could be launched here tonight. Look at the page. Let me ask get a question. Excited. Can I ask yeah. one question, Tony? Yeah. It's kind of weird to me how uh, I'm saying stuff. I keep it right here in the pocket, and then I do a little bit of that, and I'm not getting, just being honest, I've done a lot of shows. One hour in the main room, 20 minutes last night with Bill Burr and Sarah Silverman. They gave me energy. I'm not feeling it here. So we got to pick it up a notch, or you're going to get Brody being, being irritated. So let's go. You got to give me some love. What do you think, audience? I'm yeah. not feeling it. Still not feeling it. Not feeling it. Not feeling it. Why are you not clapping? I'll warm up myself. You know I'm, uh, it's horse shit. That's how I feel. You know what? I'm a... Uh... I'm gonna second what Brody said. I'm 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 not feeling it either. <laughs> so we could just pick it up. I got some T-shirts. Anybody want? <laughs> two different approaches, same result. There you go. That's Fucking why. Fucking hot I'm, as shit crowd. I'm so excited to have you two on because the chemistry uh, I feel like is definitely going to balance each other well. Um, so what do you say we get this thing started? Over 30 comedians signed up for the opportunity to do one minute. In front of a packed belly room and tens of thousands of listeners and viewers from around the world. We have people from Alaska here tonight. Put your hands together for this guy. Traveled from the middle yeah. of Alaska to I be play, here. I played baseball in Fairbanks, North Pole Knicks. That's you where he lives, Fairbanks. That's what he told me. I saw there. Juno. I saw Juno. Bought a LL Cool J cassette. Mama said knock you out in Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh -huh. Went to Sizzler in Fairbanks, Alaska. Welcome. So a lot of you know that uh, the comedians get picked out of the bucket randomly. They get to do one minute. At the end of that minute, they know they're dumb because they hear the sound of the meow of a kitty. That's what it sounds like. And that means your time's wrapped up. Don't go too long, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. <laughs> Woo, he seems extra angry tonight. And uh, so let's get this thing started. Your first comedian tonight doing one minute on... You guys ready for Kill Tony 31? Very good, Brody. That is a difference maker. Yeah, definitely. Brody, you are a monster. And your first comedian tonight goes by the name of David Ramick, everybody. Oh, oh shit. 
Oh! Oh, wow. Fuck yeah. Oh, thank you for letting me up here, Tony. I never, this is my first time, so thanks a lot. Um, have you ever, people ever heard this expression? Baby, I'm gonna fuck the shit out of you. Whoa. Yeah, that's what women like to hear. Baby, the sex with me is gonna be so fantastic, I'm gonna cleanse your colon. Huh? You're gonna have the greatest bowel movement you ever had in your life. You're gonna be sitting out of the and go, woo, he really did fuck the shit out of me. Here, here's a joke for you. <laughs> what do you call 12 male porn stars serving jury duty? Why, a well-hung jury, of course. <laughs> right that one down. And what does BP and the Non-Nowen Welfare have in common? All it took was one spill to be paying for a mistake the rest of their life. Very good. I haven't heard the animal. There we go. There it is. Thank you. Thank you, people. Uh, Okay, he went up first. Good job. But all that Tony. You want to go? You have any natural instincts? I think you're probably the one to cover this one, bro. I mean, from the get. I'll just start and get up. Guys, I want to say this. Audience, thank you for coming around. I had to put the hammer down, and I think we're good. Bob and I are are very... We're everyone's friends up here. Um, I like you made fun of yourself. You did the joke. I'm... I just, you know, the F word, the F word up front. It's a little whatever. But then you said, I'll tell you a joke. That was funny. I don't know if you intentionally <laughs> meant to do the F, F, F. Hey, I'll tell you a joke. So that was funny. Uh, first time. So I give you credit for that. Keep doing it. Um, you know, I thought you did okay. Thank you, you got it. I, I will be honest. I was a little nervous going up there. And you went first. It's not easy. Yeah. We're right. all nervous when yeah. you got up here. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how long have you been doing stand-up, talking to the mic? You're talking to the mic. Four years. Four years? Four years yeah. Where are you from? Originally? Yeah. Uh, Connecticut. How long have you been here? Newtown? Uh, well, 16 years now. Too soon. 16 Too soon. years. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck yeah. I, I thought it was, I mean, mm-hmm. it's all about delivery. Mm-hmm. It's all about delivery. What's your name, Dave? Yeah. Dave, um... Yeah, you you've got the delivery down. I mean, you just find out. Uh, <laughs> I'm li- literally pulling this out of my ass, Dave, as I talk to you because you're looking at me and I'm scared. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I saw the the thing is lift your jacket, just yeah, the right flap it? of your jacket. He you should got show something. that. That's literally. something he's got to show no, off a little bit. No, he shouldn't show that because I inst- I saw that through his uh, jacket flap there. I thought, oh God, he's wired with explosives, <laughs> <laughs> and that terrified me. Double bombing. Keep, yeah. <laughs> Tony. That's I like it, though. I like it. That's what I do. That was funny. Very. Do you guys notice he has the cum stains on his pants? Yeah, those so. are blatant. Let like me see. <laughs> Don't. Are you talking? Yeah. How were, can were you? Those, I, he said, your I, zipper I, I down? <laughs> Red Band said that about the cum stains on his pants. I was like, how can Red Band see my pants? <laughs> <laughs> oh. What, was those uh, last two jokes, because uh, it seemed like the last two were just, you know, like street jokes. Were those your jokes, or just or did you just do two jokes that you've Have heard? Have you heard those no, before? No, I, I, I never, I don't know if I ever told those jokes before. I thought them off myself. Okay. The well yeah. hung? Yeah. That's a good bit. It's, yeah. a, it's a very good joke. Yeah. It's a very good joke. Dave, who cares? I'm kidding. It's Dave, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, who cares? Do you care what anyone has to say right now? Do you really care what anyone has to say? I, there's a correct response to this question, by the way. I'm just going to let you know. There is a correct response. Do you care really what we have to say? Yes, I do. Wrong <laughs> answer. Fuck no. <laughs> fuck us. Fuck these people. Listen to what's in that heart of yours, Dave. I Dave, that's listen. I say listen to me. Guy. I'm Jewish. Don't listen to anyone. Listen to me. Listen to me. one eight till I die. I know Jews, okay? <laughs> Trust me. Arizona State listen in the Holiday yourself. Bowl. I get University it. of Texas just lost the Alamo they, Bowl. And their coach listen got me, fired. Mac Brown, Our good guy, though. Our coach is fired. Do you think Mac Brown cares? Fuck no. Of course, he just got <laughs> fired, so who cares? Go Alamo for it, Bowl. Dave. Don't listen to anyone. Continue wearing Affliction shirts and go kick ass. You <laughs> yeah. got it? I love it. Get the fuck out of here. Make the world your bitch, Dave. David Ramick, everybody. I love it. We're already bolting along. He's David Ramick on Twitter, R-A-M-I-C, for those of you that want to follow that. Um, <laughs> I, am, I am taking notes. David, Thanks. what's the last song that uh, you listened to on that iPod that you have? What was the last thing? Wow, see that? That's what I'm talking about, Limp Biscuit. There we go. I, 
That cum <laughs> shit, it's embarrassing, though. Because, like, I, I, I wear the shirt that, you know, like, I live next to a Starbucks. So I'll wear, like, the same shirt that I went to sleep in the next morning to Starbucks. And a lot of times, you know, that, that same shirt's usually, like, a cum rag, oh. you know, and stuff like that. And... It's just embarrassing. I've talked about this before. Yeah, but you it mentioned it to me last more week, than, exactly than, seven days ago. Yeah. You talked about this same shirt on right a walk now, to Starbucks. Right, I, right, right now, even Dave Rannick is saying about you, Red Band. <laughs> Ooh, that guy's creepy. <laughs> As he scrapes yeah. dried cum off of his oh, pants. Down, he oh. No, he really Still did have holiday. it. And his fly was down. That was a good observation. What, Dave, was your fly down? Can you you want to go, you wanna go maybe check? It's, maybe it's part of the character. All right. I All right, let's it. give Dave a nice hand. Win up yeah, first. That's a, that's a tough spot. It's a it tough is a spot. tough spot. Opening. He's opening. It's a very tough spot. Patriot, how you doing over there? You feeling comfortable? I'm doing good. I think you guys covered that pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys uh, do you guys have a bit that you used to do when you first started out that maybe you're embarrassed you did or like or are you is it something that you don't find funny anymore, and you can't believe that you ever said it to an audience. There was this joke about a well-hung jury I used to do. <laughs> uh, no, I uh, I don't know about you. Uh, I used to come on stage. I used to do a character. Really? When I first started out on stage, I called him uh, I called him Steve Taft, and uh, I would wear a toboggan and glasses, and I would smoke on stage, and I would come up I would come up to Europe's final countdown. You know that song? And I do it's a kick right when the music countdown. hit that crescendo. Yeah. I had no jokes. It was all attitude. And I don't know if I was, like, possibly, like, people may think it was some sort of parody of someone right. rather than it was just shit. Right. But it was actually just shit. And, and, that, and that's where your comedy really started. The first, so the first thing you it was, did in It was doing a character, yeah. A it's character all about where... self-exploration. That's why I was telling Wow, um, yeah. David. Telling Dave. Yeah. It's all about self Explore, totally. Not the type of self exploration that leads to stains on your pants. Right. <laughs> More of the artistic type. Yeah. But yeah. So that's amazing to me that you started out just doing a character with no jokes. In this exact and now room. you're locked. And now, now you, how long have you been in the Writers Guild now? Uh, I mean, now you're a full time years, years, writer. Now. In this room, I used to on this very stage. I used to perform in front of in front of deathly silence. My, how the times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke about how you guys are quiet. No, tonight. no, no. They're, they're good. Not. They're getting good. They're, they're, no, they're getting good. Uh, Brody, how about you? Are you, you are cringe moments you're talking about, like early things? Well, things? maybe cringe moments, maybe just something Can that you... Can you answer the question? What's the official question? Okay, the official question is, do you remember any joke that you may have done in the be very, very beginning of your career that maybe you're embarrassed about or ashamed that you did or that got silence? Um, well, I still do pretty much every joke that I started with <laughs> 20 years in. I don't, I don't leave them. I take them with me. Um, there's, I mean, there's stuff that I've done definitely that I think early on, looking at my early on cable access show, I've seen things and, you know, said things or, but you know, it's all about learning. I don't look at it as a negative. I, it's right. like, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta break some eggs to make an omelet, quoting totally. the great Jeff Ross. So it's like, totally. it's all good. You gotta fail. You gotta have these moments. So I hate to sound like a preachy coach, but you know, those are good. Bad sets are actually good for you. Yeah. You learn from them. I was just telling somebody, uh, one of the comedians asked me if there's a workbook that I would recommend, and I said no, that you just have to go out and do the open mics for exactly that reason. If it goes well, great, but if, it, if you fail, then that's even better because you get to learn how to stay in the pocket for longer. You know, when you're first starting out being a quarterback, I'm sure it's very scary watching those linebackers come at you. The Drew Breeses and the Tom Brady's and the Peyton Mannings, they all ha they wait that extra second for that receiver to get extra open because they know that a hit really doesn't hurt that bad. The pads made it so that are made so that you can take that hit, so you can stay in the pocket and get ready for it because that's how you make big plays. Well, I think because they've practiced hard. Peyton, I mean, they're dedicated to football. Like Kobe, Brown, well, he's older now, but. These guys are dedicated to it so they can stay in the pocket. It's like being a comedian on stage with jokes. You yep. stay in the pocket, not yep. because you're not going to get hit. I mean, you could. You just move it like Matrix, like Yoda. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. So it's stage. It really is jokes and stage time, period. Yep. That's what you start with, and then you go from there. Comedy is a filthy, uh, horrendous wench that you have to give your soul to. And by no means is it guaranteed that she'll give you that love back. True. I don't know about your soul, but I would say your no, time. I'm, I, I want, would say time. I want people to think about that for a second. If we could just <laughs> wait a couple more seconds and just let people take that in and 
if any of you want that cross stitched on a throw pillow, I <laughs> sell them out of the trunk of my <laughs> 98 oh my Honda. God. Okay. I love this. Let's go. We're supposed to critique. All people. right. Your second comedian tonight goes by the name of Cat Eyes. Why does that sound Cat familiar? Is it related to Cat Williams? Cat Eyes. Where is Cat Eyes? Is that Cat Eyes? Cat Eyes taking his time, I do believe. From deep in the gullet. Here he is. Cat Eyes, everybody. Cat Eyes. Oh, yeah. I yeah, cat check eyes. him out. I like it. Fuck yeah. I already like it. How y'all doing? I'm very well. Thank you, Cat Eyes. I was back there asleep. Sorry. Y'all woke me up. I'm feeling good. Okay. What do y'all want me to do? Is this Kevin Hart's uncle? <laughs> what? Uh, it's a joke. We're kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead, Cat Eyes. Okay. Tell my joke. Or... You got 37 <laughs> seconds of stand-up. Okay. Online dating. I'm still working on that. So uh, online dating. <laughs> uh, everybody got good stories, bad stories when it comes down to online dating. So fellas out here. Uh, let me tell you one of my dates that I went out on, you know, because uh, be careful because the lady that you do meet online, you know, when they have a profile, they have 25 pictures up there of their ass on that profile. They want you to concentrate on that. Only the booty. They don't want you to concentrate on whether they have a brain, whether you come towards you. That was actually cat eyes. Oh. Continue. Go ahead. You took a lot of time. Yeah. You took a lot of time on the front, but uh, let's see where you're going. Okay. okay. They show you their booty. Oh, they show you the booty and everything. Booty. But, but the women, the, but the women that you might want in your life is the one you don't pick on profile because you know they they take the time to put on the profile things. You know the nice good questions you say. Well, you know what do you like to do for fun? The lady that you might not pick, you know, well, I would like to go out for fun. I like to be with the man I love. I love to just go out there and just be be in love with the man and whoever I'm dating. Yeah, we're really not getting anywhere. Okay. Um, it's been, it's okay. been a minute 36 and still okay. no punchline. It, yeah. I know, it's a long one. It's a long one. It really yeah, is, and it's, yeah, too, it's long. too long. So, it's too long. so let's start figuring out what's going on here. Okay. Are you really online dating? Yeah. How's it going? Uh... I have a bigger a, question. Do yeah. you really work at some sort of medical care facility? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I think I, I've officially been I'll more work. scared than by wait, Dave's wait minute, explosives. I work at a colonoscopy <laughs> clinic. Okay. Oh, now see? I feel yeah. like this is a setup. Uh, no. Deliver the punch now. It's go, Cat Eyes, uh, go! Hey, hey, slug hey, us hey, with a hey, right hey. hook. You guys might be laughing about a colonoscopy clinic, but it's the only job I know is a shitty job, but somebody got to do it. There you go right there. There it is. That, All right, that's Cat what eyes. we are waiting for. That's what we are oh, waiting for. I, and I know where you're going with that, Bob. Okay. Okay. Bob's act, he's joking, but he's right. It's like you, the first thing you know, it's like you're in your scrubs. You got the tennis shoes, all that stuff. I don't, I mean, maybe you're just raised here, but it is, it is who you are. I mean, you work at that place. Right. So that's, I'm not saying be a character and that go with that guy. But it is, I could see a little bit of traction on that. Yeah. I, I could see that. Go with what your reality is. And, okay. yeah. you know, you've got a good personality. You can, you, you can talk. So it's like the jokes, look, they need some help. But you've got, you've got, a, you got a laugh. You've got a look. And Bob is like saying, right for that. And then yeah. see yeah. what happens. And then, then you start getting more comfortable with your, yourself and all that. Cat Eyes, do me a favor. Here's what I mean by how much your, your physical appearance affects your audience idea. expectations, okay? okay? This is what I mean. Turn and look at that row of people right up there on that second row. I want you to guess which of those six people on that front row is probably going to do jokes about the Death Star. Just by <laughs> looking at it. <laughs> That's how much people judge based on physical appearance. Play right. into that. Steer okay. into that, okay? Okay. okay. That's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, another thing that I love about your uh, your outfit is that 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 isn't a work badge on hanging there. No. That's a tap card. That's yes, an actual yes. bus pass. Yeah. I like that. I but, but the ID is on is in the inside of it. Do I you take it. the bus to the yeah. colonoscopy clinic? Yeah. yeah. There's more comedy. Heck yeah. What about? I mean, uh, think about it. You gotta look up people's assholes for a living. I mean, it's like <laughs> that's funny. See, there you, go. Yeah. you see what yeah. I'm saying? Oh it God, makes more like sense when he's in us. the scrubs. Think about 
the doctors that I work with, just imagine when they was like little bitty kids, you know, they you know, in, in in the classroom, and you know, and the kids say, "Well, what you want to be when you grow up? I want to look up people's assholes for a living." It's like it's really like witnessing the birth of Jesus right it's now. True. It, it really it's is true. a. This is a whole. I think we've all learned. I actually feel like I should charge you a fee for how much we're helping you discover your comic persona right now. Yeah. And this, what hey. Mitzi's daughter makes money doing. Yeah, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is this is what it's all about right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, is, tap so into that reality. reality. Yeah. Stop talking about stuff that that, that, that piss you off uh, by not getting a damn date. I'll, I'll tell you what, Cat Ice. Uh, I, <laughs> tap, I think I think that's sort of evident. Okay. <laughs> the, like the Bob date said, trouble. tap card into reality. I mean, tap into reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got it. Trust you should have gotten a bigger laugh. Everything I do, laugh at. <laughs> Why upset me? You think I'm wrong? Were you above Pink Dot for two weeks? <laughs> Don't no. anger me. You could talk about dating, how hard it is to date. The, like, like you go home and you smell like your job. You know, yeah, like you smell like your job. <laughs> but I mean, you can't pick up no date on a, on, on a, at, a, at a nightclub. You know, till Why not? You know, I mean, think about it. I mean, I got to tell them. I don't want to tell them that I look at people's assholes and assist looking at people's assholes. You know, I can just tell them. I'm, yeah, I'm a... Does like every girl, does every girl you date. I'm like... getting the kick out of this asshole stuff. <laughs> you don't even look at them. You assist. Yeah, I just assist. What the fuck? D- does anyway. It, does it, all your ex-girlfriends, you know, a complaint you of gotta pink You got to work up to the, the asshole, I think is what he's saying. That's actually a good bit right there. Have you ever had a girl? What this guy's saying. That you need to work. You actually don't even get to look at the assholes. You assist the guy looking at the asshole. That's right. Yeah. That's how you know you're. That's your career apex is the asshole. Yeah. The closest you get it you're is on a. You're for the It's on a good day. You might catch a whiff. But yeah. Yeah. So, that's sort of like the same thing. You know, if the date don't work out, you're an asshole. Right. Maybe maybe you'll eventually. <laughs> Can we put a cap on the word asshole? Yeah. I mean, I keep hearing asshole. Yeah. Let's sw- first, be positive. First thing you'll want to do is switch it to anal. Thank you. Okay. But, uh, Which is amazing because maybe you'll meet a girl there and, you know, that's pretty backwards. Like, not many relationships start at the butthole. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people work the loose, their way up to that. The looser the butt, the bigger your chance, you know? Okay. okay. Exactly. You can really tell by how... I feel like this is therapy or something. It is. Do people ever, we're, we're, we should be wearing scrubs. <laughs> how much we're helping you right do, now. Do people ever go in there and just don't wash their ass and you're just like, really? You know we're going to look in your oh, ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, well, all right. You know, now when some one patient came in and, and, and we have to interview them to let, you know, to find out whether, you know, they say, did you clean yourself out? That's the main thing so we can be able to look. Because they're right. supposed to give themselves a, uh, what do they call enema, that? Yeah. Enema or uh, they give some type of juice type of stuff that. A cleanse. Yeah, it's called a semen. Cleanse. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, they have to flush these Move this thing along. Sure. But we, I remember one time one of the doctors asked uh, the patient, you know. Is this going to take a minute 37? No. No. Okay. No, no it's not. But as the patient, you know, do you, you drink, drink, do you drink alcohol? Life. But th- look, listen, listen. Okay, yeah, we're I'm listening. Working. We're so listening, listening, Cat Eyes. I don't know so why. Do you is that your name out? at the clinic, by the way? <laughs> we Paging no, it's, Cat it's, Eyes. It's to the brown eyes. Just picture some doctor. <laughs> cat Eyes. Cat Eyes. Cat, cat Eyes is funny. Brown See? Cat Eyes. Eyes. Help me with this. Call latest. yourself Brown Eyes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you got it. All right, let's, let's keep it moving. Cat okay. Eyes. Great Good job. Good job, Cat uh, Eyes. Thank you. Fuck yeah. Talk about working at the proctology. I feel like we actually helped that guy. Yeah, totally. I feel like we yeah, helped him. Totally. to be on a theme of anal tonight because that other guy was telling that joke he's going to fuck the shit out of her. There you go. Yeah. Very good observation oh, there, now Patriot. Now I know why wow. the Iron Patriot is here. Yes, exactly. He, he finds is, themes through the yes. show. All right, that's he, good. He's a master of tone. That's very good. <clears throat> Brody, uh, you got it. You're pushing along. Cat eyes it said asshole a lot. And it's so lot. It was a lot of a hole. I, I like cat, I like what he got. I like what he was doing. It was just like I want to get more comedians up here. Yeah, crank yep, out let's more go. comedians. Let's, let's go. go. I agree with that. Very nice. That is the theme of the Your show. Your next probably. comedian tonight goes by the name of Mike Menendez. Here he comes. Butthole surfers. <laughs> Football season's over for my team. I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. And I'm going to tell you something. What is it? Ouch. Ouch, right? Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. I love football. I love it to death. But I hate Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the NFL. Like all the pink shit. 
that they wear, the pink cleats, the pink wristbands, you know, everything, the pink logos. And it's not because I'm a fan of breast cancer. I'm not a fan of breast cancer. If you have it, get out of here, get rid of it now. <laughs> but I am a fan of equality in sports, and there's no male equivalent in female sports. There's no testicular cancer awareness month in the WNBA where every game is played with two balls. That's not a thing. <laughs> but that would be a great idea. And you're probably looking at me saying, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Fuck you. It would double the score of every game. Testic <laughs> Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. You see the scores? My God, the Sparks scored 125 points today. Check it out. We got it just in time. Thank you, WNBA. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Interesting. I'm going to tell you what. That, first of all, I liked that. If you, you're the first person tonight to come out with an, any premise whatsoever. Um, so that's exciting. That's a very good start. Uh, let me give you a great note, something that I noticed from the very beginning. Was when you said you were a Miami Dolphins fan. You're getting into your thing. You're just getting cozy. Somebody goes, bah, 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 and you and you lost connection. You were in the very. You were just building the the bottom level of this sandcastle. You know that's so important. This foundation. We're just meeting you. We're in your first ten seconds, and somebody just says something random, some stupid sports shit, and then you you're out for a second. You lose your oxygen. Like it's just like a total disconnect. It might not seem like it, but I can notice those things. And you know it. It's that much bigger of a difference by the time you're really into it, because then people don't feel like you're a pushover. Like that you're mendable if you if you stayed in the pocket on that and just ignored whatever that was because it was nothing anyway all it was was a speed bump that you didn't even need to acknowledge whatsoever and you knew you had a minute so it's just a little something but it's actually much bigger than it seems brody you're nodding right i agree with you yeah. I, I notice i go one i know you only have a minute and a half or whatever but yeah i noticed it so Took you out of the game a little bit. You just like ignore that. You uh... saying the sports teams also just going to get you people yelling out, right? Like, fuck yeah, Every fuck time. Yeah. The one you know, thing point, that I right? ever yeah. tell people when they go, "What do you want me to say?" When you're and this happens every night. Somebody goes, "Hey, I'm bringing you up tonight. What do you want me to say?" I go, "Just don't mention that I'm from Ohio State." That's all. I don't tell them what to say. I just tell them what not to say because, you know, like a, a big time host here, Frazier Smith loves college football, and he loves saying, this guy's a big Buckeye. And so then before I even get up there, I hear guys in the OR going, boo, fuck okay. this guy. You know what I mean? Trojan it's like, fans. fuck. They're Bruin fans. I haven't like even I gotten up the there yet. They, they, they could have really liked me, but fuck. And by the way, I'm a Dolphins fan. But that doesn't fucking matter. Nobody gives a shit in comedy. Just say you're a football fan. Right. I, I love the NFL. I'm sad that it's coming to an end. I'm excited about playoffs. You know, acknowledge the sport. But you don't get too specific or else you're going to get haters out of the wazoo. But let's also remember, these guys are going to – and I'm going to let Bob pick it up. If they're in a tough situation, do 90 seconds. So everything's amplified. It's 60. It's and, one minute. Okay. So seconds. even more so. Yeah. But they're still good. These are – this is the reality. You're doing yep. a minute here. So – if a guy talks, everyone knows, ignore that guy. Yep. Push through. Yep. Yeah, and, and what's your name again? Is it Dave? Stephen. Mike. Mike. Mike? Mike. Yeah. Mike. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, think, I, I think I speak for everybody at this table. Uh, I, I don't really, the material is going to come, whatever. Feel what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Are you having fun up there? Because you yeah. looked a little like you weren't really having been fun. A bit out of it today. Yeah, it, it's okay. We all are. I'm I'm yeah. in an unhappy marriage. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> seriously, we're considering a trial separation. But you know what? I'm up here, and I'm you know. People sometimes think I have Down syndrome. I smile so much. But let me tell you something. That is a shortcut to immediate likability. And half the battle on this stage is likability. 90% if you're likable you have a lot better uh, uh, advantage of masking a lack of material or anything else than if you're not likable okay feel what you're saying experience what you're saying but have fun you seemed a little he, somber but he warmed up I noticed like I noticed totally. when he and when he, he started forward. that last 30 seconds yeah. he yep. got a little more confident yep. you know what I'm saying yeah. feel what you're saying right feel it experience have fun fuck it man you already separated yourself from 95% of the world by just getting on stage tonight totally. and giving this a world totally you already have Totally. And that's fucking something to celebrate. Look who's next to you. Goddamn Iron Patriot. Yep. 
there's a stormtrooper here. And you made him laugh because I saw his shoulders go like that. Yeah. Look, he's laughing right now. He's laughing right now. And they're trained killers. Yeah. So think about that. Something happened at about 30 or 40 seconds into that. When you moved the mic stand a little bit more to the side, you took more of a step up. You had gotten one laugh, like Brody said, and you were in it. So what this is, is, is you got to remind yourself what happened in that 30, 35 second mark, that laugh that you got that mm-hmm. pushed you even more, that you were ready to come out again because you landed a big punch. It was, it's like the UFC, you know, when a fighter lands a big punch and you see that other guy wobble, you see that other fighter like, holy shit, I'm going to do this right now. And they just start throwing punches. That's what you, I could tell you were just about to, you were sort of just getting into it. And then you actually realized that you had nothing better than the original two balls thing. But there was something in your physical motions that got powerful there at the end before you trickled out. The trick that I think they're both saying is being able to figure out what clicked at that 30, 35 seconds from the beginning. How do you open with that kind of stepping up to the edge and really delivering oh, like something you, said, you one believe thing was in? said and I was out of it. Right. Like one thing. But yeah. feel like you got that laugh before you even get that laugh, and that it'll make that laugh even harder by the and, time you get that. And laugh. I want to say one thing. Don't take this the wrong way. Shoes good. Pants good. Shirt, not good. No. No. You're wearing a Nike uh, shirt yeah. from Sports Authority. You know, it, it threw me off a little bit. And then I saw it was Nike. I was disappointed. So, but good shoes, good pants. Let's get a nicer shirt. You got a look. You got like, you got like a Jonah no, Hill on thing going we don't on. Know. Go with it. This could be an endorsement situation. Are you, are you endorsed by Nike? I'm not endorsed at all. <laughs> oh, okay. I just want to clarify. Because he was being paid to wear State, this. Right? Division One baseball. Who are you guys sponsored by when you play baseball? Pony. That's right. Golden Pony. Pony. Do they make Pony? They make Pony. They're Don't owned, they're owned Pony. by Pony. They're owned by Puma. I think, I th- I think he's <laughs> What's right. your point? Mike, is Mike giving you shit right Mike now? Let's find out. Go ahead, Mike. We're I'm, asking asking shit. I'm, asking going. Going. I'm just asking. The defense of I, number one mistake. Mike, relax. <laughs> I agree with Brody's note. Lose the, lose the, lose lose the, the swoosh. It's not personal. Just don't do it. Mike Menendez, everybody. There he goes. I love ponies. Respect. Mike's great. Great job, Mike. Good, a good hug. That was a nice moment. We are. This is a trespasser. You lost your phone. Uh, we got it. D- Josh has it. Josh. Uh, Josh. I heard. I heard guy. that. Go that you, way. Get out of here. Go, go, said, go to the back. Go said, to the back. Go to the back. Go to the said, back. Go to the back. What are you doing? Okay. Get the fuck out. Why of here. are you here? Move. Hey, hey, Move out of the way. <laughs> There you go. Is this why we have cameras? <laughs> Get him out all the way. Get him out all the way. Get him uh, all, all the way out of the building. That kid was tweaking. Josh, all the way out. All, <laughs> Josh, all the way out of the building. Josh, put him in a chokehold now. <laughs> Bob, it was fine. It was you, fine. You've been, did I say you? Here, here, here's what I think we what all learned. What the fuck was that? No, but here's the thing that I really, really enjoyed out of that whole experience. The head of security stood there and didn't do a goddamn thing. <laughs> he never does. Thank you, Iron Patriot. Well, he never does. He truly Bob. is the next Chewy Castro. Bob, let me explain. <laughs> I got to okay. stay in position here where my mic is. Gotcha. I'm, I'm here to do some podcasting. I don't gotcha. Give a shit about I get it. Yeah, we, ca- we call him the head of security. The truth is, is that he can't move. Okay. <laughs> he takes the bus. He, he, Bob, he literally takes the bus here because he, he has to stand up the entire time because he can't sit down. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I'm just uh, what just happened. I don't the, understand the what that was. I mean, now I'm my adrenaline just started went my body. Now I'm starting to shiver. It's weird. I felt his weird energy coming from the very beginning when he was coming around the corner. That's how crazy my ins. I'm like, this guy's about to do something. He reminded me of this girl that came on a couple weeks. A girl came up here a couple weeks ago and was just like, I'm gonna show my tits for stage time. And I had Ooh. Jimmy Schubert and. Uh, Kirk Fox on at the same time, and they're both like, you know, and those guys, if you know anything about those two, they're like, all right, let's do this. And I'm yeah. like, oh, shit. And I lost it. So the next thing you know, we had a trespasser on stage. But I had that energy from him. Lost Don't his phone, and then he kept guy. walking. This, this audience is a good audience, and you guys made it possible. Let's keep it going. Here we go. I love it. That guy gave me the finger. I had to grab the bucket out of him. He tried to grab my fucking bucket, man. Nobody grabs Nobody my grabs. fucking bucket. Nobody puts the bucket in the Son corner. Son of a bitch. He almost had 118 pounds of steel on top of him. <laughs> yeah. Your next comedian goes by the name of Tim Greer. Didn't come here looking for trouble. I'm just getting down to the Super Bowl show. What's up? How y'all doing? 
So, uh, I'm getting old. Like, the older I'm getting, my mom's bugging me about kids. This is my thing. I'm pro-abortion. I am. I'm pro I feel like for every abortion, you save a child from abduction. Like, I think that's, you know, I think it's fair. Seriously. Like, I can't afford kids. Like, I don't even have a cell phone. Like, if you know anything about bootlegging phones, I have Magic Jack. Like, I can call people with Wi-Fi. You know what I mean? I'm serious. It's really hard for me to, like, think about actually having kids. Like, I feel like if I had cute kids, I would sell them like pit bull puppies. Like, look, I got these babies. They're pretty and they have black. My kids have to be half black. Yes, my perfect girl is Jewish, freaky like a Hispanic. Seriously, because uh, Jewish girls have good credit. Mexican girls are freaky. Uh, I would say smart like an Asian girl and, and loyal like a Middle Eastern girl, because Middle Eastern girls don't get to do shit. Seriously. Uh, yeah. Interesting. That was good timing. We were getting there. The end, uh, yeah. There he is, Tim Greer, first of all. That's fun. Pro-abortion. Um, I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. Tim, your material doesn't match in any way, shape, or form who I thought you were. I'm going to be <laughs> honest. I thought you were going to come up here. You're, you seem, you come across as a very likable guy. You remember that I was telling um, uh, the guy right before you the importance yeah. of likability? You got that. You walk up, you're smiling, all that stuff. I honestly wouldn't have thought the seventh word to come out of your mouth would be pro-abortion. You know what I mean? <laughs> it kind of throws people. I don't know if you're trying to work, uh, no pun intended, dark, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It doesn't, it, to me, gut instinct after watching a minute of that, that's not who you are. I don't know if you're trying to shock or whomever, but you have like a good onstage persona. Does that make Very sense Very true. No, I totally agree. If you find the material that matches who I think you come across as to others, I think you're going to be pretty damn good. I just don't, that just seemed like it was really, really sharp, sharp-tongued kind of harsh material. Okay. Bob, nice job. Thank you. <laughs> now... You weren't so harsh on uh, Dave, the first guy I went up. Well, that's you know. because I was terrified. Okay. <laughs> so I, okay, Tim, I, what Bob said, I feel that you, I, I thought it was good. I liked when you said pro-abortion. That's funny to me. It's kind of polarizing. It's a statement. Boom. So I like that. I was kind of with you on where you were going. And so I think that bit could be fleshed out. I yeah. feel like your mic technique is a lot of, even I eat the mic, but your mic technique was good. Uh -huh. You're dressed well. I feel like just keep doing what you're doing. I'm not going to beat you down for that bit. I don't mind. Obviously, there's a political thing with Bob and myself. <laughs> He's from the, you know, the Bible Belt. I'm from Southern California. We have different opinions on that. So I'm okay. I like you said, pro-abortion, whatever. It kind of like woke people up. The only thing I didn't like, what you said was like, how's everybody doing? You don't have to say that. I, I don't like it when, it, hey, how's everybody doing? I know it's a greeting, but go like right into it. After that, you went right into it. That's so right. I thought it was good. Make sure the second word you mentioned is pro-abortion. That's, <laughs> <great. laughs> That's a great advice, Brody. Yeah. Hey, Dig that hole right away, Tim. Dig it right away. I didn't mind it. Have I you, didn't mind it. It's not a political thing, but it, here's the thing. If you are going to do a bit about uh, abortion, you're Back. digging a huge hole Make sure you can get yourself out of it. I don't know if you are. I don't. I, I, I say expect some turbulence. I don't think if you really say, I'm pro-abortion, first of all, you don't even know what that means. It's like a double negative, whatever. So they're not going to be that. They might be a little confused. There might be a few who get upset with it. I don't think it's so bad. That's my opinion. But Bob has kids, a wife, a family. I live alone on an air mattress. Have you ever had a girl, have you ever gotten a girl pregnant and she had to get an abortion? Yes. So then maybe you could say, I'm pro-abortion. I'm a pro at talking girls into getting abortions. Well, that's, I think that's hilarious. Well, that's if double, you that's take that double dark. Well, I'm evil. That, see, I can sell that because it's different. I'm just going to take it and turn it into a golden bit. Um, but Bro. thank you so no. <laughs> so you helped. True. It's like, actually are we, are true. We, but no, I agree with what Bob said. Are a lot of the other topics that you talk about dark and creepy, or are you more of a? Because you, you do yeah. have this likable, super yeah. likable charm. Yeah, I, I talk about a lot of dark stuff. Mm -hmm. he's, How, go, he's going through that period. Right. Right. I, I, I would say you. They're right in that. Why go dark? I mean, why make it hard on yourself? I'm not saying they're wrong. You are digging yourself a hole. Like I say, as a comedian. Why make it hard on yourself? You don't have to. So, 
There you go. You this know, is your journey. That's subjective, Tim. though. This is your journey. You're driving the car. We're just along the highway, and you drove by us for a second, and we offered our, <laughs> True. our, our minuscule opinions. You go where you want to go. But I'm just telling you, my snap judgment of you, I was just like, whoa, okay. Here's where he's taking us. I didn't see that. Pro-abortion. I was okay with it. I thought it was like a Kanye West vibe. I was with it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we not laughing when I say <laughs> stuff? Because I'll tell you what, it Kanye bothers West? me. And I did an hour in the main room on Saturday night. I crushed it last night you going after it. Bill Burr and Sarah Silverman. Not going to come up here and be disrespected. Uh, you know what? Oh, oh, hold on. And I did 15 minutes two Wednesday nights ago at 12.05 in the original room. So, you know, fuck you. <laughs> right, Tim? <laughs> fuck you guys. Yeah. Talk about abortion all you want Fucking to, Tim. I don't give a shit. There you go. Tim Greer. He's at T. Greer on Twitter. That's G-R-E-E-R 33. T. Greer 33. Now, here's something funny about Bob, because like he said, this is his first podcast. And, you know, every time that I announce uh, who my guests are uh, on this show, I announce it only over Twitter. You know, it's just a little thing that I hope that people will eventually, you know, sort of know about or whatever. So I just trust that Twitter will lead people there. So I had to look you up. And then I realized, I look up Bob Oshak. I'm wondering if I'm spelling it wrong. It's just this one little eggs popping up, which means that you haven't come up with a profile or anything. You've never tweeted before. No. You've never, not one tweet. I don't think you're following anybody, but you have, no, you have over 100 followers. That that I didn't know that to be honest. Yeah, I thought it was around 18, 19 followers. I'm shocked by that. So there's people that know about you, and you don't even tweet. You have a Twitter presence without even tweeting. I joined Twitter because I live in a shitty part of Culver City called uh, Culver City, <laughs> and uh, I always want to know whenever I hear the gunfire, is it gang related or a domestic situation? Wow. And I get the little Culver City tweet feed, so oh, I'll know whether or not to hide the, ki- hide the kids in the bathtub, you know? That's hilarious. It is true. It's true. You but, can uh, really find out. Oh, and I also follow Pat and Oswald. So those are the two. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so there you go. Wow. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll, I'll tweet something sometime. Maybe I'll make it about, about abortion, since that's such a crowd pleaser. <laughs> <laughs> did, did I read you, uh, you've you been married to the, your high school sweetheart? And you've yeah. You've been with the same person your whole entire life? Same and woman. No one yeah. else. Ever. Since high school. That's amazing. Wow. 1989. So I'm 41, so we started dating when I was, uh, I can't do the math right now, 17, something like that. Wow. If I, got, if I got my wife pregnant on our first date, uh, our kid would now be old enough to rent a car and, uh, <laughs> and try to find me. Because <laughs> I would have. Can I, can I add one thing? I would have split town. And I don't, you got to use that. I don't I know, know if this audience knows or the, the podcast audience knows. You can tell, like. You know, Bob and I, we're not agreeing on a lot of things. Kind of confl- audience with Bob, you know, me, Brody, dark, big, aggressive, went after that guy who tried to attack Tony. Um, do you know, you know that Bob and I worked together for over a thousand television shows? We did. Yes, we did. We did. So about at Fox Sports, Best yep, Dance Sports Show, sports Bob show. was the... The writer, head writer, one of the head or writer, all that one stuff for the beginning, from the beginning basically, all the way through the end, a thousand shows. I did all the warm ups. Bob did the the news. This is the jokes. twelve years ago, Brody. Can you believe that? Well, yeah, we started 12? in two thousand and one. Yep, twelve and, years uh, ago. So there's a lot of history here. So so we're all good. Thank you. We're Despite we're family. Differences. Yeah, you wouldn't sure. know that. Would see that's how this town is. You never know who knows who, people. Right. Work with Bob, one thousand television shows. <laughs> that means something in this town. <laughs> wow. It really is. You know, I, you I think, go. Tony, I think the lesson here is that despite how we look as people, you don't really know what's going on up here, you know? You, don't. you look at me and you think, oh, you know, folksy, you know, middle aged, <laughs> out of touch, doesn't know how to tweet. You would never think that this motherfucker had a <laughs> Oh, what the yeah. fuck? Come here. Somebody I'm fucking even thrown punch off me. by that. Somebody fucking punch me right now. <laughs> you are ripped. Yeah. That's crazy talk. That's, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> I, was doing a, I was doing a character, Brody. I, didn't I love you. it. I was telling We're Bob before the show, he's like, what's going on? What is this? I go, just have fun. By the end of the show... Uh, what I take pride in about the show, I told him, I go, most of the guests that I've had on, almost all of them, by the end of the show, end up going, man, I was by the end there, I was having so much fun. I was so warmed up. I wish it went on forever. I'm pretty sure we're seeing that happen right now in the middle of the show sure, with you. Sure, sure. I'm having I, a- 
Right? It, Jimmy Schubert his first show podcast, his by the way. Yeah, first, no tweets. Dirty, first flexible. podcast. Right. Were you Land of the Lost? What? Uh, <laughs> anybody? <laughs> Thank you. Come on, it's Patriot. A shame, it's a shame he's only had sex with one woman his whole life because another lady could have enjoyed those abs. Yeah. Oh, it's a very good. There you go. Again, uh, that's what? why we've got the Iron Patriot here. Yes, he's got the, and he's also only had. He sort sex of knows with... how to close out a conversation with one big <laughs> boom. And he's also only had sex with one woman his whole life. No. He's one not married. When, when yeah. you have sex with one woman, do you like have to like mix it up? Just like like ha- like have her get stung by bees once a week or something like that? Like, <laughs> no, no, you just uh, you just kind of kind of phone it in. You role <laughs> play. <laughs> Well, you know, I, 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 I'm going to sound like I'm doing a bit here, but I'm also the only guy she's ever slept with, so neither of us know how much better sex can be, you know? <laughs> she thinks it's normal to roll off of her after about 45 seconds of irrhythmic humping. So, mock us if you must, oh but we... Oh, my God. Ignorance, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so fucking funny. Brody? I'm thinking about that Jeff character on Ferguson... Is he supposed to be like a, 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 a contestant from Price is Right? Because he has like a name tag, Jeff. It looks like the old Price is Right. You guys, I, I don't know if anyone from even Kurt knows Ferguson. what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, we have a, a, a robot sidekick you're referring to. Yes. Yeah, that, that's part of the, the reference. It's actually operated by someone who's a, a genius. So I, I can't take any credit for, for that. But he, I'm, he's whatever. a writer as well. No, he's not. He actually performs the robot solely. Josh Ooh, Roberts. He does wow. it and says the words? Yep, he's operating it. It's pretty impressive. And yeah, Craig just job. trusts him to play around. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. The chemistry wow. is... Uh, I can't take any credit for That's that amazing. whatsoever. amazing. In, in all I, honesty. I like, I like Craig's monologue in that he gets right up in the camera. Yeah. It's really loose and different. Yep. So... I love that you know, he grabs it. That. He grabs the jib sometimes, yeah. I notice, and he'll just like really connect. I was talking with a water boxer earlier about a uh, television personality who r- didn't look at camera that ba 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 It's all about connecting, and I think Ferguson does an extreme job of that. Yeah. And uh, It's not easy to... No, <laughs> thank you. Stay seated. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, there is, it's difficult to establish intimacy when you are a TV host, it yeah. is. He does that incredibly. It's amazing. Yeah, it, it's an amazing. It's, I'm listen. I'm lucky. I've worked for four years on that. That's why I live oh, yeah. in a cocoon. That's why I, I started writing. I've been on a job for four years. I mean, I, I don't know how to tweet. I don't know the importance of the. This is a podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't <laughs> understand all that stuff. I mean, when I started, like you, you have experienced unbelievable success since. Well, when, you know, thank since you. I started writing. Thank you, Bob. You know what I mean? Whitney Thank Cummins. Thank you, the one guy applauding. Whitney Cummins. No, we that's okay. Hanging You're out. You're okay. I like I've you. just lived in a cocoon for four years. It's a great job, but I'm someday it'll end, and I'll be like, wow. But that's People. so, Bob, I think it's refreshing that you don't tweet. I think you should be podcasting, I'm not on the actually. Facebook. The Facebook? That's okay, that. but do you have I don't a cell have phone? the Facebook. I do have an iPhone. All right, yep. you have an iPhone. I do have the four. <laughs> but you know what you're doing? You you are you're doing a great job, and you're one of the nice guys. Every you know people don't bad mouth you. you totally, you've earned everything you've got. Oh. Like you used to host well. all the Sundays and Mondays here. One of the original hosts, and that's really <laughs> one of the most badass things you, you can be in comedy. And I know a lot of comedians always make self-deprecation jokes about about oh no, it doesn't pay the bills and this and that. But I'll tell you, man, when I got here and people meet a door guy and they find out how much they love comedy, they give them a list of about five guys that are just monsters, <laughs> and you are on that list. And so there's an anticipation yeah, when you yeah. first are in the back of the room, and they're like, and you hear the next comedian go, "Who's next?" And the piano guy's like, "Bob Oshak," and you hear that name that you've heard people who you already look up to saying, "Look out for Bob Oshak," this and that. And then you're sitting there, and your expectations are already sky high. And in comedy, there's nothing worse to fall than high expectations but you do it man it's fucking fun so check out Bob Oshak live sometime you're, uh, you're here Wednesday or follow right? me on Twitter <laughs> he'll follow you okay. back alright let's, let's continue with your with, next comedian tonight I feel like I'm being fucked with no <laughs> okay. it's not at all this is your first d- podcast yeah, this it's this about you time. we this want the, you to this shine this is the kind of life you could be living no. in the podcast <laughs> world of compliments and praise put your hands together for Ben Platt but Gollum at the evil wall Oh, wow. Could this be our first guitar comic in Kill Tony history? Good evening. Good evening. My song is Vampires Are People Too, and I sing it to you with a California accent. The whole world can believe what they want about Dracula, except me. I know that he lives, and he's not who you think. Throw him in prison and rip out his fangs 
they will grow back like knives. Put him in solitary, he will escape. Hungrier, no, for Burger King, vampires are people too. <laughs> vampires crash the gates, <laughs> heaven will they fly. Clown round paradise before they say goodbye. And do they love their mamas, same as me and you, remember forever. Vampires are people too. In exactly 59.5 seconds, Ben Platt nails his landing, confident smile afterwards. A vampire song. I've never seen anybody stick their landing this confidently in the history of this show. Most gu confident guitar comic I've ever seen in my life. Nailed the minute. Uh, you know, normally... You I know, it, yeah. every comic's goal when they get on stage... Ben, right? Ben? Yeah. Every comic's goal when they get on stage is to make the attractive blonde in the audience laugh. And you, sir, <laughs> She's I'd like to introduce up. you to the attractive blonde in the audience who Thank laughed you. your entire set. Hell yeah. I didn't hear a word he said, but I Neither could I, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> the very fact that I could hear you is a test to how many other people were laughing, but my point is, that's the goal. You hit it out of the park. That alone makes you a winner, Mr. Benjamin Platt. Heck yeah. Um, can I jump in, Tony? Yeah, definitely. Of course, Brody, your guest on the show. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? I, I, that's a good point. <laughs> We're both guests. We're all guests on Tony. I, I, I just, I, I li it was nice. I mean, you're a nice guy. I like your left-handed. The shirt's tucked in. I, li I like the look. Very bold Colorado. Nike shirt? No, it's <laughs> not. No? Okay. Right. Not a Nike flannel. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Um. I would say just enunciate more. If we're talking about the bits, enunciate more. Um, didn't, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if it's stand-up or a coffee house song thing. I would say enunciate more, and then we'll see where that goes. But good guitar, likable. There's, there's something there. And I couldn't agree with him more. I wouldn't exactly call it enunciating. I would say that as a guitar comic who's always going to have to face at many open mics the issues of audio. Do you have two mics? Do you have one on the guitar? Do you have one up there? What's that level? What's that level? I think your guitar was a little too loud for the singing. You know what I mean? So it could be a little bit lighter, just a little bit more acoustic and mellow because in comedy it really is going to, I mean, and no doubt about it, you have that likability that also counts for a lot but they're definitely going to want to hear the exact words that you're saying. We could hear you in the beginning, but once the guitar came in, it was just a little bit too loud. Maybe project a little bit more. That's something that I definitely had to learn when I first started out. I wasn't pushing. It's just about 10% vocal push that, uh, that adds all the difference in the world. You know what I see? It's a big guitar, man. You could hide behind that thing. Mm -hmm. I'd go with the banjo. <laughs> Again, why no laughs? <laughs> or, why no laughs? Or a ukulele. So not only am I uncomfortable, he's hurt too. So think about that when you don't chuckle based on my cadence. People get hurt. Ben, what are you going to say? Were you in the hangover? You weren't. So I know what I'm doing. I'm going to play that game. Me against you. Go ahead, Ben. What about the joke? What was the joke? Yeah, that's that's I sort of that's the tough part. There's a bigger issue it. here, Ben. Okay. Um, I don't know what your act was about, to be yeah. honest. Uh, I know you were Did doing you some hear? sort of accent thing. Right. You it's an hear? audio issue. You couldn't hear me. That's what we're saying. Not really. Yeah. We could hear it a little bit, and it was likable. We could tell you were talking about vampires, and it was cool. And I was just wondering. Can you summarize it real quickly? What yeah. what we just watched? Into the mic. Into the yeah. I started out, and I was talking about uh, the whole work and believe what they want about Dracula, except me. Uh, he's not who we think. Throw him in prison and rip out his fangs. They will grow back like knives. Put him in solitary. He will escape. Hungrier. <laughs> For Burger King. Vampires are people too. Ah. Oh, okay. You know what? I agree. I think a banjo would help that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. A thousand shows. Professional. What, what helping the me joke? out. The joke didn't work. Well, I don't know if there really was a joke in there. Yeah, it's really not. It's a long way. It's, it's just sort for of a, an abstract thing that you're doing up here, which if you're right. like... Uh, which it's, is good. That's yeah. good. I can see I it on a Geico commercial. You. How long have you been doing stand-up, uh, Ben? About six months. 
Six months, okay. And do you always want to be up here doing a Dracula voice while you play no, guitar? No, not always. Okay. I would recommend maybe chucking the Dracula voice right. and making it more about who you are. This because could... it, let me tell you something. Tonight, I, I, and I don't mean to disagree with, with the attractive blonde, and trust me, if you're going with you know which to, two, which to pick of the two, you either have <laughs> the beautiful blonde or the six-pack here. But uh, <laughs> if the vampire thing takes off tonight, if somebody's like, you're going to be stuck doing vampire voice for the rest of your life, just like Gallagher's stuck splitting watermelons because that took off. So be careful. You may want to make sure you're yourself on stage as you play guitar because that may be... Uh, that may be who you're stuck being when you become a super successful comic. You see what I'm saying? So That's maybe true. this could. It's six months in. This could just be your toboggan smoking cigarette character that Bob was doing. Steve Taft. Yeah, <laughs> that, Steve that's Taft. true. Can I ask one? Can I, I throw in one more thing? Why is it that open no, new comedians they're so defensive with an attitude? That's why you don't make it. This is Hollywood. This is show business. When you bring defensive energy, and I'm picking up on it, that's why you don't make it. Sorry, it and pick true. up on energies. There's a re there is something about. You know, they talk about network or schmoozing or doing yoga or all that. There's something to that. So when you pick up, I'm picking up energy. I go, out, see ya. I ain't going to hire you because it's negative energy. If you give me positive energy, something to work with. Ben, I love your smile. I love your energy. We We're going to get another comic up there. here. Thank you so much. Ben Platt, everybody. Good ben, job, I ben. hope you come back. I want to... They love Ben Platt. Ben... Please come back next week or the week. I, come back soon, all right? Sign up again. I want to. I want to see what you do next. And next time, don't be such a defensive asshole. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the poor guy was just smiling. Yeah, we we have. <laughs> Brody, what did you do? Really hell? Literally, I couldn't have met a more gentle, mild mannered man. <laughs> Fuck so you, Ben Platt. All these guys, they're too defensive. They stand up here with their guitars and their flannel named Ben Platt, smiling at me. Why would you do that? You don't get it, Ben. Six months, you're not going to fucking make it. I've done a thousand shows. You got it. Brody, you just oh, push. stole his soul. <laughs> you got to keep doing it, though, but be nice. <laughs> he did it. This is the return of Eric Carter, everybody. Internet sensation. And one of the luckiest motherfuckers in the world. It's Pish. What's up? How y'all? Oh, yeah. Fuck how y'all doing tonight. I am from the deep <laughs> south. I am from the deep south. I hate NASCAR. I don't watch Duck Dynasty. I'm glad I got that out of the way. Let's rock and roll and be positive. Man, living in California for five months, shit so much different. Y'all use different words. What y'all call skinny jeans, we call women jeans. What you call vegetarians, we call pussies. My first three months of doing comedy, I lived in the youth hostel in Hermosa Beach. A lot of fun because I got to bang four in broads, but it did have its awkward moments. I had this Japanese guy that couldn't speak English sleep in a bed beside mine. But that wasn't the creepy part. The creepy part was he had a box of Kleenex right by his pillow, and I never heard him once blow his nose. I'm assuming he was tugging that Pokemon. <laughs> and by the way, I want to apologize to you. My first kill, Tony, you was here. I did two inbred jokes. I wore a white linen pants. Uh, yeah, your time's up, well, Eric. I want to hear um, this. I want to hear this. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> no, go on, Eric. All right, go, ahead, go on. Eric. No, I lied to you. You did? Yes. I told you it was my first time and I wasn't because I was intimidated by you and I respect you. And I want to get that out of the way. You got it, buddy. Good job tonight. Positive energy. Brought some energy. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. No Are problem. Talk you're talking to him? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Awkward. Eric, go ahead, Tony. You brought the energy. As always, people love you. Uh, it was great again. Um, uh, what was the note? It was, uh, yeah. You know, it's one thing that I've noticed that you've done, because I've watched you a few times. You've gotten on the show a lot. You're, a lot of the listeners, you know, go crazy about you. There's been a lot of tweets. And you're like, a, you. you're definitely a fan favorite. So let's get right into something that I've noticed since you've been on a few times that I think Either you could use it to your advantage or you could nip it in the butt now, but I think keeping it on as a bad habit isn't going to help you. And that is 
when you hit a punchline, you do this thing where you show everybody that that was a punchline. If it doesn't go great, you go, well, you do this thing, and then you go on to the next thing. But <laughs> you can either do it or you can't. You can either commit to it, showing the questioning of it, or you can lose it. But where it is now, somewhere in the middle, you're just showing a little bit of weakness. You're showing them that maybe they didn't get a punchline. Whereas either you can ignore that mellow laugh and plow on, or you can really commit to, that didn't get a laugh, and then move on. But where you're at right now, it's in between the two things, and it's just coming across as weak in this super powerful set that you have. You come up, you fucking almost German suplex the mic stand (laughs) behind you. Very interesting maneuver. There's definitely different ways to do that, uh, other than the two-handed 360. Uh, (laughs) So, you know, I mean, that's just one thing that I notice. Uh, You know, you definitely have perspective, which is always fun. How about you guys? What did did you notice about Eric? What stood out? Well, I don't know, Eric. It's my first podcast, by the way, Eric. (laughs) Glad Um, to have you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Eric. Um, I... uh, I, I've never seen Eric before. Obviously, he's some sort of superstar here on the uh, on the uh, show. But uh, do you? And I couldn't see you because I'm at a bad angle. But do you smile at all during your set, or yeah. do you always? Okay, that's what I was just gonna say because you looked very serious as you were doing your material. Not not serious, but just like really intense and into it, almost like a Southern preacher like. Which sort of works for you, but every now and then maybe a, a telltale smile of sorts, right. which, again, if you were given it, then disregard this note, would help out. Because there was a, a super intensity to what you're doing that could like get a little overbearing if every now and then you don't let, you know, let people see a crack or whatever and see that you're having fun, too. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I keep I keep pounding the smiling thing, and no, I know, no, it's but true. I'm telling you, man, I I milk my smile. I genuinely smile a lot during my act, and if it doesn't work for certain people, I don't recommend they do it, but for you, I think that that does help out, you know, that you do act like you're you're having fun and experiencing what you're doing. You, you see what I'm saying, coming from my perspective. Yeah, well, smiling's, smiling is important, you know, I'm not saying laughing, smiling. So I get, I'll smile. That's why I do the. You get people on your. It side. does. It does. It's, it it's, does. It's a time. way to ease off the gas ever so slightly when you have your pedal to the metal the rest of the time. So yeah. I can. Little... I can't speak specifically to that. So I don't. I don't know if you're smiling, but I'm just saying I, li- I liked your energy. You're holding the mic. Are you left-handed? No, I can use both though. Okay, so I like that. You got wow. the southern. I... <laughs> wow. <laughs> With the mic, you can do both. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. So you should I try used that to box you, as a kid. You should so, try uh, that with a mic stand next time. You used to box as a as a child? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, Well, how man, old were you? I mean, not as a child, as a teenager. Oh, I did okay. it when I was 14 to 16, did it all season for soccer. Okay. When the soccer season was out. Child yeah. boxing sounds hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Just you're, as an aside, I don't know if you want to go anywhere with that. Just make sure you smile while you're talking about it, but I, I, you know, I watch the comedians. I really I mean, material's not my thing. I'm not, I can't really Harp to on a ninety on a sixty second material bit. I look at the general thing. So what I see, um, I think you're onto a good thing. Likeability, smile. If you weren't, just keep doing. You got a you got that accent. Keep it. Don't lose it. What's going on up there? I'm hearing talking. Thank you. We're doing a podcast. So I say keep doing what you're doing, and just be likable and nice. There's a reason why they're saying good things on Twitter. Thank if it you. ain't broken, don't fix it. Just keep. Doing what you're doing. There you That's go. And you're well dressed. Well dressed. I like that. You doing a lot of spots. Well you staying That's busy good. at nighttime. Hey. You going up a lot. Yeah, I, I've been hitting open mics like Great. in uh, S- South Bay. And That's exactly what you need to be doing. There hey, he goes. Thank you, fellas. Eric Carter. Oh, yeah, Very good. Oh, the Patriot. Oh, hold on, the Iron. More vegan. Hold on, the, I think the Iron Patriot is going to end this with a so theme. Do it, Eric. Go ahead. I, I know karma's a bitch. My bitch. If there you don't watch football on Sunday, give me your man card. There you go. An I like that. A little something for the listeners at home. And, and a big fuck you to the live audience. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's an Eric Carter joke from a few weeks ago. There you go, Eric Carter. That's enough. There it is. He's on Twitter at CallMeEC. He's Eric Carter. Now, an exciting thing. I don't know if I got to mention this to you, Bob. Every week, we have two young ladies that since episode one, they have been doing a new 60 seconds each week. And they are with us here tonight. This is their part of the show where they do a new 60 seconds, and this is that part. Oh, this is exciting. Exactly. So there are two two monsters being built here in the confines of Kill Tony, and tonight will be no different. 
Um, first, uh, you know her as at Princess Shank on Twitter, and she is a fantastic. She's a little bit different. She's weird and goofy, so know that going into it. Here she is, everybody. It's Sarah Wine Shank. Powerful. What's up? Yeah. Visors. I don't understand them. It's like either wear a hat or don't wear a hat. What is the purpose of a visor? Go full hat or go home. Even more confusing, a bald man wearing a visor. You would think that he would like to reap the benefit of a full hat. Not always the case, guys. I was thinking about it the other day while I was looking at my furniture, wondering if I would ever really need coasters. Like, is my furniture ever going to be nice enough to not get rings on it? That shit doesn't matter now. Am I ever going to have napkin rings? I don't know, but I won't ever have visors. That's for sure. All right. There it is. They're such monsters that they know exactly when the minute is. That's (laughs) 59.52. The visor bit. And then the coaster thing's a new thing, and you ran out of visors. Yeah, I ran out of visors. Right, gotcha. I didn't want to overstretch Gotcha, just wanted to make sure that I knew what was going on there. Yeah. The visor thing is hilarious, and I think it could be bigger. I mean, I don't even know where it begins. It's almost like it's a convertible. It's like a, I don't know. Is there anything that pops in your head when you think of a visor, Brody? What do you, have you do? You ever football coach? All right. Steve is Spurrier. that that same weird football heckler guy? It's Shut okay. Shut the fuck up. It's all right. It's all right. He's a Dolphins fan. No. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Christ. I, I like the visor. But I, I like. You could tell that you've been doing. When well, you've been here, it's obvious. You've been. You've been watching the show. You went right up. Even when you said how are you guys doing, you kind of made a joke about that because we talked about that earlier. So you know, that's a little funny thing, right? I'm again. We're back. I don't see everything, yeah. but. The, the visor bit, it's tight. Seems like there's a lot of, you know, visuals. Boom, boom, boom. You had good stage, like your own little personal stage posture up there. That was good. So I say keep doing that. That was good. Confident, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but I know you are rushed at that second thing, and then it seemed like you are a little frustrated. But I'm not going to hold that yeah. against you because it was, that was yeah. you know, you're up against the clock. So I was trying to think of visor stuff all week. So right. pissed off. No, asking it seemed other people like it. I mean, you got pretty much a double applause break in the first thirty seconds of your set. So I mean, it showed. I mean, there's no doubt about that. In not, fact, I would good. even. There's not really much more you can do with visors. Right. I mean, <laughs> right. I know. And the way that you have it is, I think it's almost pretty important that you sort of lock it in where it is. The way that you said, you know, uh, I don't understand visors. You had it there, and then the big one came. But what I really don't understand: bald guys in visors. And then you had it. You nailed it. But I think it's tag worthy right there. Almost something like, you know, what? Why do you want the top of your? What, why do you think we want to see the top of your head? You don't want the sun yeah. in your. You don't want the sun in your eyes. We don't want your bald head in our eyes. Like I don't know, like yeah. something like, like get into it. Think about bald. how it hey, makes you feel. Oh yeah, hi Brody. Yeah. When yeah. a Jewish person <laughs> wears a, a visor, it's a hat, right? It's called a yarmulke. <laughs> totally. not a... Well, that's an oh. interesting one. If you're wearing a yarmulke and a visor. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's what, that's what Tony I just picked me up. <laughs> what you that's what I just it. said. <laughs> if you're wearing a visor and a yarmulke, that's probably one cheap visor you bought. Uh, there's something nothing there. Nothing on see? that. Not a single giggle. Okay. Oh, I think we got. It. No, there's it's because the person's there. Jewish people. You know what I got upset with when you when you said a Jewish hat and I go it's a yarmulke. Nobody laughed again. <laughs> How do you not laugh at that? It's funny. How many Jewish people are here? Show your hands. Three. All right, that's my Jesus, point. Th- I like you. Very, said, very. I like that you said show your hands, and they all clapped. <laughs> yeah. I entered. You guys made me laugh. That was good. I thought you were really good. I don't know you. I, evidently, you come here every week or something. Yeah, but she's a regular. Yeah, you're very funny. Very. Thank you. What are you very trying to get at with the coasters thing? You're saying your furniture is yeah. so bad you don't even care if it gets rings. Yeah, but like. I, w- I didn't know if I was going to go into that or not, so I didn't even go for it. Like, I just don't think I'll ever need to buy coasters. But I'll, that won't ever be a thing for me. Like, right. napkin rings and coasters, I only have, like, disposable Because napkins. by the time you have money to buy coasters, you're going to just have furniture. I don't know. I don't get it yet. <laughs> I don't know the perspective. Your coasters would cost more than your table or something. Yeah, basically. Right. Essentially. Yeah. It doesn't matter. 
By the, the time you have coaster table. money, you're going to have new furniture money, so you yeah. don't give a shit whether it gets rings or not. Yeah, I see coast, and I coaster, I go coast. There's a joke like something with New York, that coast, West Coast. There's a, there's a joke there. I'm thinking maybe it's like a marriage thing. Like I, I look at I look at my coffee table the same way I look at blobbity block because I don't care if it gets a ring or not. Something like that, I don't know. See how my mind works? I the Kardashians. Jokes. Like the Kardashians. So yeah, the coaster thing needs work. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And there's nothing there yet. Yeah, it's so a it half ass coaster work. joke. <laughs> but the visor but thing the visor is thing hilarious. Is great. And it's in the mix. That's just one more 40 second chunk to add to all the other hilarious stuff that you built. That's Sarah Weinshank, everybody. A Kill Tony regular. Positive energy. She's always happy, smiling. Fun to hang out with. She's a good person. She gets it on stage and off. And so does our other regular. She dropped out of college at the University of Florida because she became a Kill Tony regular. She went from gator to hater. And now, here she is. She's Kimberly Congdon, everybody. Hey, guys. Um, so I have a lot of opinions on things. Uh, I've been noticing some things that bother me lately. And this is one of them. If you have a tattoo that says blessed, you probably aren't. <laughs> you know? I feel, like, I feel like the only people that have blessed tattoos wear jorts and wife beaters. They don't have sheets on their mattresses, you know? And like their mothers had eyebrow rings. Like those kind of people. <laughs> the font. The font is always like that nightmare before Christmas across the chest. That's not blessed, people. They watch their friend give a homeless guy a 20, and when the friend walks away, they turn around like, uh, he said I could have half of that. Thank you. <laughs> there it is, another 59.39 seconds set. They definitely know the time. I just want to jump in real quick. Mm -hmm. I I like that there's a bit there, like the blessed tattoo. You establish that right out of the gate. We know we're doing that. I think it just needs to be written more. There's a, it's a good topic because we all know that you see those guys blessed, you know, the basketball guys or the UFC guys. And I think you just have to get more specific with examples make it visual you did you said hey it's that block letter and then you give examples like the ufc guy or but i can't say specifically it's a whole thing but it's a good topic and there's a lot you made it clear where you were going now you just got to like just write it the parameters are there it's an interesting bit it, I like it, it. you know this uh, i guess this applies to uh, uh sarah earlier too. uh take with it uh whatever i i am a uh, i don't get on stage a lot so whenever I go on stage, uh, whatever I do, my stage time is precious. So I know my material backwards and forwards, even if I've never, ever done it on stage. And if it sinks after one try, I toss it out, no matter how much time I rehearsed or whatever. If, there, if it doesn't work at all, what's up? You seem like you were kind of struggling to remember the bits. So they were in your head. You weren't reading, you weren't really focused on the room, and you weren't really focused on your set. You're kind of in between, trying to figure out where you were going next and trying to hold on punchline to punchline. Yeah. Know your material. Yeah. Know it backwards and forwards. Brush your fucking teeth with it so that you can say it backwards if you had to. Stop when I snap my fingers and go right back through it the other way around. Right. I've got my shit. That's why I was nervous about doing this. Right. Because I wanted to script everything I said tonight. Because right. I don't know how to do spot. But I learned that uh, I'm actually really good at this. <laughs> And I now have 100 Twitter followers. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying, Kimberly? Yeah, You've no, got yeah, a great, and there's great material. I guarantee you, you know how to boom, boom. It was a setup. Right. You had your great setup. And then I just saw you going tag after tag after tag. Yep. Yeah. You know those like the back of your hand, barrel through that, boom. That audience is in your grip. It's definitely... Uh same thing it's, I said. No, it's, <laughs> it's true. It's pretty well written, and it, you got it there. You just want to be able to flow with it so that we're not like waiting. You know what I mean? Like It's sort of like we're like, come on, get to it. Like It's like yeah, we're yeah. rooting for you. Um, but it's you know a, a vast improvement um, on other things because it's really a great premise that even though we well, all Well, everyone laughed connect, right away at the premise. It right. wasn't even a, a, a joke. It was an observation. So right away, you know that you're bonding with the people. That's the best laugh in the world when you just get a laugh with yeah. what's well, basically an observation. Yeah. And then, so you know the audience is on board. Then it's just boom, boom, boom. Like so you had them. 
When you've it, got the material right there. Just make sure you know it really right. tight. And really drive in how big of losers these guys are. You know what I mean? Like, I, I almost can't believe... You can almost see, like, the unevenness. Like, the tattoo artist was laughing while giving yeah. the guy the blessed tattoo. Like, yeah. you're not fucking blessed. Like, add, yeah. add stuff about how... The, how the tattoo's permanent, but his respect from people is temporary. Right. Exactly. Um, you you know, so many things to play the off that. Get There's into the so blessed. Many a lot of those tags you could have been blessed, yeah. He's only blessed after he sneezes. Like the sheets. There's so many skin tags on that. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There's the... Wasn't there's even the, a good joke, and you gave me something. Detail. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, fuck yeah. And you stayed on that the whole time, right? Blessed? Uh-huh. Great. Yeah, I did. When well, it, uh, it, it, if you ever feel yourself flailing, just do it in vampire voice. Maybe that'll help out. <laughs> have you been Maybe doing that'll spots? Have you been going up other I places? I have been doing spots, Great. yeah. This Sarah, one, you too? Yeah. This Great. one I was trying to do. I, every time I go up, I, try, I talk about different things that annoy me about people. So right. that's why I wasn't... Right, that's you know. definitely a, a part of your natural voice. And you, you, have good, you speak well, you speak clear, you Thank enunciate, you. so keep doing that. Awesome. Was the whole dropping out of college? That was just a that That's was a true. joke, right? No, she That's was real. she oh. was a full time college student. Her cousin is friends with uh, with Brian and I, and uh, so we met her as soon as she got here. The cousin told us she was interested in doing comedy. Her first time ever on stage was right there, and she kept coming back every Monday since. She decided not to go back to college. She dropped out, went to Florida, picked up her stuff, came back. And now lives. With You're all in, Kimberly. In yeah. You put all your chips in. Yeah. That's the it. only way to succeed. Absolutely. That's the only way to do it. So if you're all in, be all the way in. That's Good Kimberly Congdon, everybody. She's on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon. That was episode 31 of Kill Tony. Bob, you got anything coming up you want to promote or anything? No, uh, he's no. at. Let's try to see how much we can blow up your Twitter. No. That's at Bob Oshak. No, That's it's B O B O S C. It's not H A C K. It's Shack Knife. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, that's it's right. It's not even. S-H-A-C-K. Yeah. S-H-A-C-K. Knife. One word. Yeah. Shack knife. At yeah, Shack funny. knife. Let's see what we can do to increase. Blow up your MySpace. Do you have a MySpace? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did recently launch a Friendster, if anyone's interested. You know what? Let's so. just give out your phone number, Bob. Uh, what's your <laughs> phone number? Call Bob anytime. Um, well, it was so much fun to have you, Bob. Brody, what's going on with you? You got any shows coming up? What Anything am I doing tomorrow? tomorrow? What's tomorrow? You're near um, what? what? I uh, well, New Year's Eve. I have. I'll be here New Year's Eve tomorrow. Yep. Uh, you can catch my shows on the internet. They'll be up there forever. Uh, Stephen Brody Stevens, enjoy it. Follow me on Twitter. All that good stuff. I want to say thank you to everybody. Understanding that I'm in a very vulnerable situation and I'm, I have a lot of tension. You guys are great. The audience, thank you for being here. All the comedians are good sports. And I think when we say something to a specific comedian, when I say it, it's not necessarily for that guy. It's for everybody. Right. Not that I'm an expert. But whether you like it or not, I've been doing it for 20 years. So you'd be, you'd be not smart to take some of my, my experience. Two of my favorite and, and Tony, people. Tony, just real quickly, uh, thank you to at Mikey Beatty, who just followed me right then. So I guess there I'm now, at, a, now at 101. It's already begun. That's at all things Brody on Twitter. Uh, I'm Tony Hinch. Brody's Brian Redman. We're in Texas, baby. Yeah, January 9th, 10th, 10th and...